Uh, there's a certain CD, uh, there's quite a lot from India, where you've got a bard, like Sukhmi Bard. And at the end of the Sukhmi Bard CD, there's someone singing, like Sun Sun Bani, there's things, songs like that. Now, is it the general rule that if what is being sung after the Bard is the lines can't be found in the Guru Granth Sahib Ji, then that's Gachibani? Do you know which of those uh, words are at the end? Do you know? Okay. Sun Sun Jiva Teri Bani. Well, Sun Sun Jiva Teri Bani is in the Guru Granth Sahib. That took. Let's make it very simple. Sikhi is not complicated. If Guru Sahib says that anything that is not in the Guru Granth Sahib is Kachi Bani. Whatever it is, whoever says it, even if Pai Ranti Singh says it, even if Pai Jivan Singh says it, if it is Kachi Bani, it is Kachi Bani. What is true Bani is true Bani. So anything that you hear that is not in the Guru Granth Sahib, it is Kachi Bani. And six would not sing it. Does that mean that Guru Gobind Singh Ji's Bani is Kachi Bani? Okay, good question. Guru, Guru Gobind Singh's Bani is... No, 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 it's a good question. Guru Gobind Singh's Bani is what it is. It's Guru Gobind Singh's Bani. Parthai Sakhi Mahapurk Bolde Sanji Sagal Jahane. Okay, we know that Guru Sabs have written many things that are not in the Bani. You will say, How? There are many Hukamname that were written by the Gurus. Hukamname were letters. Letters that were written by the Gurus. Now, yes, those letters aren't in the Guru Granth Sahib. But it doesn't mean that the value of that is anything less. You understand? So Guru Gobind Singh has written a letter to Kabul, and in Kabul he says to his Sikhs, "Ke apne kakar paya karo, meat ni khana, te guru guru japo." Yeah. So and the Sikh says, "Oh, well, because it's not in the Guru Granth Sahib, I don't believe it. That's nonsense. Guru Sahib has written it, so we believe it." Jovi Bani Guru Gobind Singh Ji Di Hagiya O Ha Guru Di Bani Which is why we believe it and we sing it. The question really is what of Guru Gobind Singh's Bani is Guru Gobind Singh's Bani and what of it is not Guru Gobind Singh's Bani? That is a separate problem which we can't discuss here necessarily because that is something that the Panth needs to decide that out of all the Bani that is taken as Guru Gobind Singh's Bani, which of it is truly Guru Gobind Singh's Bani, which of it is not his Bani. Because a lot of it is perhaps not his Bani. What we do know is that the Jab Sahib, Trapasad Swaya, Denti Chopi, all of these things, cut to cut, are definitely Guru Gobind Singh's Bani. And since the time of Guru Gobind Singh, the Sikhs have been reading this, to the extent the Amrit Sanchar is not complete without Guru Gobind Singh's Bani. Those three Baniya. Remember one thing. In the Amrit Sanchar, we also read it in Ansar, don't we? Yeah? They, at Guru Anga Dev Ji's time, an Ansar wasn't written. At the time of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, none of these Banis were written except for Jabji Sahib. But what is true at the time is true. What takes place afterwards is then true for that time. Guru Angadev Ji was not there at the time of Guru Nanak, but when he became the Guru, he was the Guru. And then everything he said is true. At the time of Guru Gobind Singh, Guru Gobind Singh decided that this Bani will be done at Amar Sanchar, and we read it, and everything that he has written, we take it as Guru Bani. So we sing it in the Gurdwaras as Guru Bani. But the Guru Granth Sahib, as our everlasting Guru was ordained by Guru Gobind Singh himself. Not the Bani that Guru Gobind Singh has written, but it doesn't mean to devalue it. You understand? There is a whole lot of difference. You're not devaluing it. But our Guru Granth Sahib is Guru Granth Sahib. Is listening to music bad? We've had this question probably about 
six, seven times in the question box. There's the exact same question. Um, so we'll get a couple of views on this. Bye, Monavir Singh, to start with. <laughs> Again, we'll today's uh, presentation about Baba Faridji. When you got the material, when you taste something which is more sweeter, so when you start listening to Kirtan, so Bainti is if you want to follow a Sikhi, then start listening to Kirtan. Go to Kirtan programs, listen to Bani, Sukri Sahib, the part of the CD, listen to some radio where they have Gurbani and Katha. When you start listening to the Baba, you will know, you will say, hey, why am I listening to this? Oh, it's that like that they're screaming. It's that like they think, oh, what they're saying. But I just like, even imagine if you're watching television news, they create an advert comes, they're singing. Hey, even if you walk in the shop and they got some music playing, you you don't get ananda out there. Ah, ananda, ananda, sab ko kaha ananda guru te jaane. Oh, guru, yeah, the, the guru will give you that blessing. The guru, he, that's the sab the khushi hori bichi ya. If you even think that gaane sun ke taun khushi hai mein niya, then I don't know, you know, that's up to you. But true happiness will come through guru only. Okay. And hey, uh, rather than um, say yes or no, I'll say try something sweeter. Jururi, you're going to just stop at Ghani. Ghani, patani ke te lo ya, is really down here. Why not, to, is that how, how you can keep your ambitions in life? Ghani, so nanta ki tu simat rakhne. Just listening to songs, why not go, rise above that? Because the khal said there's no limits. So that's my response, Paul Chukma, why khal said Same thing. Yeah. 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 Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Like Pai Manavir says, it's, um, it's what you want in life. What's your journey? If you want to stay where you are, then by all means carry on what you're doing. But if you want to move near to Guruji, then Guruji states clearly, there's no ambiguity, no doubt. Mere Mohan, Sarvani e na sunai. Mere Mohan, O oh, Vaheguru, O oh, my God, Sarbani Yena Sanaya, let not my ears hear this. Sakat Geet, Ragtun Gavat, Bolat Bol Ajay. Sakat is a person who does not believe in God. He's totally influenced by Maman. He's totally into worldly entanglements. And you cannot name one pop star, one singer who is not into Maman. No matter how good their music is, they're totally in it for money and wealth. And Guruji says, please, oh God, save my ears from listening to their songs, their music. Why? Because it'll only take me away from God. Because they're not there themselves. Guruji even goes further than that. He said, even if somebody who is singing religious music and inside him there is no love for God, koi gave, ragi, nadi, bedi, if their inner is impure, if their inner is full of lust, anger, greed, entanglement and pride, then they will also fail. So you, do very, you need to be very careful when you go away from this camp. If wherever you are now, you take one thing away from this camp is to change something in your life. That's the only way you will move on. Otherwise, you will either stay where you are or you go back. The choice is yours. Um, I'm just going to add something to that because um, in the workshop that we have back in Bradford, there was uh, this question came up and we discussed it for about two hours. Um, ev everyone discussed it and what we came to, the, con uh, the conclusion that we came to was Anything that anyone says to you, anything that goes into your ears, has an effect on your mind. So, for example, if I was to say, <laughs> that has an effect on you. Yeah, has an effect on your mind, has an effect on your body as well. If I was to start singing, <laughs> that would have a very bad effect on you as well. So anything that, we, that goes into our ears has an effect on your mind. Which is why Guru Sahib says only listen to one thing, which is Gurbani Kirtan Naam. Everything else is Juta, is not, not Sachi Bani, 
and it will have a negative effect on you. Okay? And I promise this wasn't put in by myself. If your, if your diary is really long, If your diary is really long, can you tie it in a net <laughs> or tie it in a gutti? <laughs> sorry, or tie a gutti on it? Also, can I put Vaseline to make it soft? I'll just check how long mine is first. <laughs> okay. Vahe Guruji ka khalsa, Vahe Guruji ki fateh. I personally, this is only my personal view, <clears throat> and I think uh, my colleagues on this panel may not uh, agree entirely with me. The Dada Prakash that we have in the camp as such is essential because we regularly go into Darbar Sahib. Guru Bani Devich, Guru Sahib says, Se Dariya Satya, Jo Gurcharni Lagan. So when you go to do the Matha Tekna, it is essential. And the uh, Itihasik uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, I think, during uh, history of recordings, Jate Apne Guru Amrdas, Ni, Guru Ramdasji, Guru Ramdasji, I think, Hanji, to say that they would be prepared to wipe and clean Guruji's feet, I mean, God's feet, as it were. One of the children of the Lord, they would use the Lord. Where they would say, 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 they would say. So the Lord should be Prakash when you are in the presence of Guru Granth Sahib, when you are in the Sangat, when you are certainly in Kirtan. There are, I think, in the past couple of times, I've seen mentions, from the Jatha to say that if you are doing Kirtan on the stage, your Dari should be Prakash and not be tied up into Guti as such. But for people like my colleague here, Gurinder Singh, where you are doing something practical and for myself even in a scientific lab when you are working, I personally feel for work to just tie it so it doesn't get into dangerous uh, situations where m some of the people may be working on machinery where there is a necessary need sometimes so that we take care of the dari and not to show that we are so brave six that we want the dari to be uh, flowing no matter whether it's machinery if it gets trapped it doesn't matter if half of this gets chopped with the blades and so on it's not the right thing i personally think so are all women allowed to give out dig because during the camp it's only been sings are women allowed to give out dig because during the camp it's, all, it's just been sings that have been giving dig out by manveer singh कौन से क्रेत में आता था पंतक से क्रेत में आता है एनी बड़ी खंड दिए दे अमरतारी दे सकता है इस गुरु दी कृपा फॉर द रीजन ही शुड बी अमरतारी यू नो होवे द वी हैव रिसीव्ड द गुरुस कृपा बट नॉट टेकन अमरत नो मी गिवन आउट देग फॉर द रीजन द पर्सन हु गिव्स आउट देग शुड बी अमरतारी एंड सी एम बी बी कैन डू द एनी थिंग्स एंड व्हेन वी गिव आ प्रसाद समन हु आस्क द क्वेश्चन uh, when they, uh, this, you see the things in the morning and the evening as well. Pana Panjara Singhal on the Prashad. That's to represent the Guru Khalsa Panth. To represent Satkar Khalsa Nuya. But the first they give it to Panth Singh. And on, according to the Panthak Sikrayat, Madhu Sri Kaal Taksavdiya, in that you can have women included as well. So you can have, you can give Prashad to Bibi Amritari, where you can give it to her as well. Okay, next question. By Sardit Singh in uh, the workshops yesterday said as many times as you change your clothes your surt changes please ask to explain m more clearly on the behalf of many so the question is as many times as you your clothes change your mind changes can you explain that further <laughs> you will change your clothes you will change your clothes no matter i understand वाहेगुरु जी का खालसा वाहेगुरु जी की फतेह मैं कपड़े चेंज कर दा वा पर मैं आहे चिट्टे ही पाना वा एवरी टाइम तुसी देखोगे मेरे को आहे ही या चिट्टे ही कपड़े या यही दो तीन सूट या मेरे को तो यही मैं तो ओके ना ना दोबारा दोबारा पालेना 
ਤੇ ਇਹ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਚੰਗੇ ਲੱਗਦੇ ਆ ਕਿਉਂ ਚੰਗੇ ਲੱਗਦੇ ਆ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟੀਕਲੀ ਕਰੋਗੇ ਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਗੱਲ ਥਿਉਰੀ ਤੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦਾ ਡਿਪੈਂਡ ਨਾ ਹੀ ਮੈਂ ਕੋਈ ਐਸੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਬਹੁਤੀ ਵਾਰੀ ਵੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਨਾ ਪਤਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਤੇ ਕਿਤਾਬਾਂ ਚੋਂ ਪੜੀ ਹੋਵੇ ਕਿਉਂ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਕਿਤਾਬਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਪੜਦਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਪੜਨ ਦਾ ਹੀ ਟਾਈਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਜੇ ਕੋਈ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਤੇ ਪੜਨ ਵਾਲੀ ਚੀਜ਼ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਉਹ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਲਿਖ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੂੰ ਪੁੱਛੋ ਬਾਬਾ ਹੋਰ ਪਹਿਨਣ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਖਵਾਰ ਜਿਤ ਪੈਦੇ ਤਨ ਪੀੜੀਏ ਤਨ ਮੈਂ ਚੱਲੇ ਵਿਕਾਰ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਕੱਪੜੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਹਿਨਣੇ ਹੁਣ ਕਈ ਵਾਰੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਆ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਨਾਨ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਜਦੋਂ ਕਈ ਬੀਬੀਆਂ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੇ ਕੱਪੜੇ ਪਾ ਕੇ ਆਉਂਦੀਆਂ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਉਹ ਕਸ ਬਦਮਾਸ਼ ਬੰਦਾ ਤੇ ਕੀ ਸੰਤ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਸੁੱਤ ਡੋਲ ਜਾਵੇ ਸੰਤ ਵੀ ਡੋਲ ਜਾਵੇ ਸੋ ਜੇ ਦੂਸਰਿਆਂ ਤੇ ਕੱਪੜੇ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਤੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦੇ ਉਹ ਆਪਣੀ ਸੁਰਤ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਉਹ ਡਿਪੈਂਡ ਕਰ ਆਪਣੀ ਸੁਰਤ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਉਹ ਚੀਜ਼ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਜੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਗੁਰਮਤ ਆ ਤੇ ਗੁਰਮਤ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੋ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਗੁਰਮਤ ਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਗੁਰੂ ਦੀ ਮਤ ਲੈਣੀ ਸੋ ਗੁਰੂ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਵੀ ਉਹ ਕੱਪੜੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਹਿਨਣੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਹਿਨਣ ਕਰਕੇ ਮਨ ਤੇ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵ ਪੈਂਦਾ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਦੀ ਹਰ ਚੀਜ਼ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਮਨ ਤੇ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵ ਪਾਉਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਇੱਥੋਂ ਤੱਕ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਿਮਰਨ ਅਭਿਆਸੀ ਬੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਹੁਣ ਮੈਂ ਗੱਲ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕਰਨ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਨਾ ਇਹ ਅਭਿਆਸੀ ਬੰਦਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਆਮ ਬੰਦੇ ਦੀ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਸਮਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਣੀ ਉਹਨੇ ਫਿਰ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਭਾਈ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਇਦਾਂ ਕਹਿ ਕੇ ਸੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਕੱਪੜੇ ਇੱਥੋਂ ਤੱਕ ਕਿਸੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਹੱਥ ਮਿਲਾ ਲਓ ਭਾਵੇਂ ਉਹ ਰੱਬ ਦਾ ਹੀ ਬੰਦਾ ਆ ਹੱਥ ਮਿਲਾ ਲਓ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਸਿਮਰਨ ਟੁੱਟ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਿਮਰਨ ਕਰਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੱਥ ਮਿਲਾ ਲਓ ਕਿਸੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਹਾਂ ਇਹ ਕੀ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਭਾਈ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਹੱਥ ਨਹੀਂ ਮਿਲਾਉਂਦੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਕਿਸ ਨਾਲ ਫਤਿਹ ਬੁਲਾਉਂਦੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਹੱਥ ਜੋੜ ਕੇ ਫਤਿਹ ਬੁਲਾਉਣ ਲਈ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿਉਂ ਇੱਕ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਕਿ ਭਾਈ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਹੱਥ ਲਾਣ ਨਾਲ ਕੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਕੋਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਠੀਕ ਆ ਆ ਬਿਜਲੀ ਦੇ ਜਰਾ ਤਾਰ ਨੂੰ ਲਾਈ ਨਾ ਹੱਥ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਕਿ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਚਲ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਛੱਡ ਆ ਇੱਕ ਬੀਬੀ ਬੈਠੀ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਮਰ ਜਾ ਹੱਥ ਲਾ ਛੇਤਰ ਪੈਂਦੇ ਕਿ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੋ ਹਰ ਚੀਜ਼ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਦੀ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਨਾਮ ਜਪਣਾ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਬੰਦਗੀ ਕਰਨੀ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਇਸ ਰਸਤੇ ਤੇ ਚੱਲਣਾ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਗੱਲ ਸੁਣਾ ਦੇਣਾ ਛੋਟੀ ਜੀ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਪੈਸੇ ਲੈ ਲਿਆ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਬੰਦਗੀ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਦੱਸਣ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਹਾਂ ਬਾਬਾ ਸ਼ੇਖ ਫਰੀਦ ਜੀ ਦੂਸਰੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਸੰਤ ਕੋਲ ਗਏ ਜਿਹੜਾ 70 ਸਾਲ ਤੋਂ ਇੱਕੋ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਲੱਤ ਦੇ ਭਾਰ ਖੜਾ ਬੰਦਗੀ ਤੇ ਖੜਾ ਸੀ 70 ਇਅਰਸ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਸੀ ਖੜੇ ਨੂੰ ਬੰਦਗੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੂੰ ਤੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਫਰੀਦ ਜੀ ਉਹਦੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਨ ਚਲੇ ਗਏ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਲਾਗੇ ਜਾਣ ਲੱਗੇ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਲਾਗੇ ਨਾ ਆਈ ਫਰੀਦ ਮੇਰੇ ਲਾਗੇ ਨਾ ਆਈ ਜਲ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਸੜ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਦੂਰ ਹਟਣ ਲੱਗੇ ਤੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਫਰੀਦ ਜੀ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਵੀ ਨਾ ਹਟੀ ਮੀਨਸ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਖੜਾ ਖੜਾ ਰਹੋ ਬਾਬਾ ਫਰੀਦ ਜੀ ਵੀ ਉੱਥੇ ਖੜੇ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਦੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਦਿਨ ਲੰਘੇ ਤਿੰਨ ਦਿਨਾਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਉਹਨੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਅੱਖ ਪੁੱਟੀ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਫਕੀਰ ਸੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਖੜਾ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਫਰੀਦ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਫਰੀਦ ਕਿੱਧਰ ਆਇਆ ਫਰੀਦ ਜੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ
ਸੋ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਘਾਟੇ ਪੈਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਨਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਜੇਬ ਵਿੱਚ 10 ਪਾਉਂਡ ਗਿਰ ਜਾਣਾ ਫਿਰ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗੇਗਾ 10 ਪਾਉਂਡ ਮੇਰੇ ਘਟ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਸੱਚਾ ਧਨ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਸੱਚਾ ਧਨ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਨਾ ਤੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਫਿਰ ਹਾਵੇ ਪੈਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਫਿਰ ਨੀਂਦ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਬੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟੀਕਲ ਮੈਂ ਥਿਉਰੀ ਚ ਵਿਸ਼ਵਾਸ ਨਹੀਂ ਰੱਖਦਾ ਕਿ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਕਰਕੇ ਦੇਖੋ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਵਾਈ ਇਜ਼ ਵੇਅਰਿੰਗ ਜੂਲਰੀ ਰੋਂਗ ਫੋਰ ਅਨ ਅਮਰਤਾਰੀ can we wear jewelry when we get married bhai jagandar singh wah guru ji ka khalsa wah guru ji ki fateh it goes back to the same thing that pai sahib just said baba hor pehnan khushi khwar jit paide tan peediye man mein chale vikar what do you wear jewelry for to look beautiful to make others think you look beautiful is in your body beautiful already has god given you all your organs working beautifully it's another distraction for the mind it's another direction away from why guru keep it simple gurmat has a simple law sada khana sada pehnana thoda sona thoda khana this is why pai sahib is saying bar clothes if you are going to wear clothes that attract attention then you don't know whose attention you're going to attract and maybe even destroy somebody's attention who is trying to con- concentrate on kirtan or part you may be distracting them as well and i've seen many many examples in gurudwaras and in camps where youngsters not aware of the clothes they're wearing they just think it's fashion but in, a, in fact it's not really good clothes this you, you need to have a a certain amount of decency in your clothes uh we don't go as far as the taliban or the islamic tradition as cover all your head and cover all your face and everything no which is saying be practical at least cover your body if you can and you find out as you go into gursikhi and to gurmat you realize that there's there's a really practical reason for it and in guru sahib's times be beaten automatically and if you go back to your mothers and grandmothers there's one thing called sharm hiya it was just understood by daughters that bachi sharm hiya rakhni hai te nar di izzat hai aaj ka le gaya today who cares wear what you like go well, fair enough do what you like go out when you like come back when you like you might get away through for a while but soon or later the bad guys going to catch up with you if they haven't caught up already cuz they're looking for shikar so guru ji is saying my khalsa my guru six know what to eat know what to wear and know how to think they think good they wear sensible clothes and they eat sensible food very khalsa my guru the question is for those that didn't hear is if you can't wear jewelry um then are we allowed to wear a necklace that has a kanda on it or a, or a ring that has a ikon card on it etc if you're desperate to wear jewelry then i would suggest you wear a kada and a gatra karpan it looks more beautiful than a necklace around your yes i would i would uh, request them humbly to really look into them some saying what's the reason for wearing the necklace even with a kanda right is it that they 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 have a edge to wear something that's gold colored or something uh you know i lost this edge 30 odd years ago i mean like i i'm practical i don't just read books either i live i try to live by what i sort of uh, believe in and it's not that hard but some people find it very very difficult they got to wear something and i said fair enough it's individual choice but as far as your mind is concerned your battle is not with me not with your sisters is with yourself this is what i was saying at the end of the day you must realize what takes you away from this path what brings you on it if you're still into jewelry if you're still into pop music then basically you can say well i'm not really started this journey yet because the mind is totally into this direction and if we get time either tomorrow or 
I'll, I'll, I'll expand on this with, the, with the another sort of example, but at the moment we have not time for that. Moreover, it is of Guru's hukum. You see, all Guru Granth Sahib, you Guru Granth Sahib, the Guru Granth Sahib has written, the Lakh Takya Ke Mundre, Lakh Takya Ke Haar, Jit Tan Paiye Naan Ka, Se Tan Hove, Shaar. Jitha Tushi Ye Sone De Gane Pao Ge, Aakhar O Tan Ne Mitti Te Swa Bada Jana Hai. That's all. Then, Guru Sahib said, Shingar Keda Karna Hai Phir. Jitha Sona Ni Pena, Pena Na Te Phir Hor Shingar Keda Karna Hai. Dehi Nu, Shabde Da Shingar. Tushi Nu, Angreji Da Se Jara. where the jewelry of the Shabd, in other words, make the Shabd the garland around your neck, make the Shabd your jewelry, in other words, your mind is totally focused on the Shabd, then that is the jewelry for it. And that's the jewelry that Guruji loves you to have, because that will then take you to God. Other jewelries which stay here, they'll burn away with you, or somebody will steal it, or you lose it, or then you uh, cry about it. The real jewel, the real jewel is Gurbani and Naam. And that's what you want in your heart and in your conscience. The rest is worldly. Now we're not saying all of you got to wear white clothes, or yellow clothes, or blue clothes. But you're saying wear decent clothes. And I'm sure all of you understand that. As Paji said, we should not mourn those who die. Does that mean we are not supposed to cry or show emotion when a loved one passes on? It's very difficult if a person is a close relative, e.g. sibling or child. Um, Benji? It, and death is, is unbelievably hard. Um, I lost my dad in 2000 and my daughter here helped me through it. And it's it comes back to by the same things talk home. Uh, when you're crying for somebody that's gone, what is it that you're crying about? Uh, if if the person that passed away is a gursik, you should be rejoicing because that gursik has gone into Maharaj's realm, and you should be happy that they've gone to a better place. Because at the end of the day, this is galjuk, and everything around us is galjuk, and it's taking us further and further away from Maharaj. So when that gursik passes away, they've gone to an absolutely fantastic place so you should be happy about that the reason why you're so upset and you're feeling so blue and you're feeling upset is because you've lost something so it's the whole way talking saying men I've lost something so I comes back into it again so recently I had these confusing thoughts again um, uh, somebody dear to me was going to have an operation and, and mine goes straight down the, the other end and, and worries what happens? What's going to happen? Are they going to make it through? Or what's going to and and again, it's home because it's going to change my life if that person doesn't make it through the operation. Oh no, I will have no jugga to go. It's, it's that mere thing again. But if you believe in Maharaj, you believe hukum and everything happens in his hukum. Joy, so challenge, everything, everything comes and goes, and that's what we're supposed to rejoice and say. If you're the hukum here, but death is. Easy to say, yeah, you shouldn't cry, but it is very, very hard. And the more Gurbani you read, the stronger you come, and you do accept his banner, I think. Just to note on that, uh, Abu Bibi has faced a very hard time with their father passing away, and he's a very, very dear friend of mine uh, before we be married to our family. Uh, Singh's his father was a very dear friend of ours. We, we sort of started off Sikhi together near enough. We spent hours and hours doing Keith and part and all that. So he was very, very dear to me. Uh, and it was a tragedy when he passed away, so, so, so sort of youngish. Uh, and obviously Bibiji felt uh, very deeply, as, as any, any of you would if your father passed away. Uh, and there is no quick fix for that. You know, because you spent your whole life with uh, uh, your mother or your father, or if your brother or your sister, how can you how can you console somebody and say, "Don't cry," is going to a better place? Yes, there are words of consolation. Deep down, there's a deep wound of separation. So I tend to say now, be practical. If you feel like having a cry, have a good cry. Get off your chest. Don't bottle it up because that can cause extra stress. But if you're going to cry, don't overdo it because that can also lead to depression. The best way is really 
prepare yourself for life's end because anybody can die anytime and Guruji is really saying is we should all be prepared not just for our deaths but deaths of our beloved ones because we know Jo aya so chalasi sab koi aai vaari Bani a maayar or what? If a person was good I'm not saying he was a saint in the fourth stage but if he's a good person with virtues we said don't cry for him Sant muya karo ye Jo apne grah jaye He's going to his house He's going to a better place he might not reach, reach such a kind, but, but there are other kinds he can get to. Robo sakat bapre jo hatte hat bukai. Say cry for them. We're going to the uh, entanglement of the 84, the cycle of 84, you 80 million 400 uh, species. Cry for them because they forgot God in this life. They totally went entangled in, into mammon, into the world. They are going to suffer. But even then, if they are your beloved ones who are in that category, I would still say, do not overdo it. Because that can lead to depression. Bring your mind into Guru's word. And the Guru's word, and I've had this time and time again from people who've gone into this sort of very, very uh, sad situation. They've said that, I'm going to begin to say, pay my sympathies. They've said, time and time, Sarji, I can't tell you how much Gurbani part has helped us. Time, I've had this time and time again. He says, we did, I mean, just a month, two months ago, my uh, brother-in-law's, uh, my wife's sister's husband, he lost his father. He was 80-odd in Canada. The doctor said to him, you are fitter than a young man. He used to walk four hours a day, two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. And it was a fast pace. And the doctor said to him, you have got no illnesses whatsoever, you're totally fit. So he couldn't go by any disease. He had a car accident. Car crash, his wife survived, he didn't. And my brother-in-law is a Munna. He's not really into Sikhi. He's, he's worldly. But because he's born in a Sikh family, he knows about part. He does part now and then. And when I went to pay my sympathies, he said, Brother, when I went to Canada, and when I said part, it helped me immensely to overcome my grief for my father. So even if you're not into Sikhi deeply, Gurbani is always the remover of pain. So please stick to it. We all face sadness in life. We all will. Because that's the fact of life. Some of them will go tomorrow, 10 years time. We might go. But be prepared by really, really putting your mind into Gurbani, into Guru's feet. And then you'll see how blissful it is when the pain comes. When almost everyone at the beach did Matha Tekna after the Ardas, what were they doing Matha Tekna to? Bhai Manveer Singh. Matha <laughs> <laughs> so you have to ask him to take one of the pictures. Uh, I personally walk and disturb by myself. But I see my thought in a Guru Gan Sahib Ji. And when they sang at the arm toward the Guru Sikh, what they would do is when they would touch the floor and they'll do this and then touch the forehead. Because the Guru Kesok is cut away. The Guru Kesok had it too. Like the dust of the Sangat. When they sang at the old got together, Kirtan Kita, part paraya. So that you get the dust of their feet. When it's going to hit Aja, you get the dust and you put it to your feet. To your forehead. That's basically what I've learned from Guru Six. Tamatha take not to Guru Gan Sahib Ji. When they worry people, they if we do part of her, go when they photo Tamatha take. When they do it, that's they on purpose stand towards the photo of which depiction of Guru Gan. Sometimes on purpose, I start standing the opposite direction because that isn't the Guru. Guru Shabd Guru hai. Guru Gan Sahib 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 Guru hai. I mean, not going to go into our direction of doing Tamatha take to a photo, but the beach. Um, if you, the protocol of the Guru Gan Samaha is not the arm to which Guru Sikhs have said that Charam Turi like if Sangat if Sangat is there if not that the Gutka is the Gutka is the Gutka is the Gutka is the Sarnava and Gutka is the but if the uh, Sangat is there doing the Gutka of the of the Charam Turi okay the question was if you give money to poor people and then say I gave money to poor people isn't that ego
Guru Ji, in a, is a, a very beautiful slok by Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. Tirith Bharat Ardhan Kar Man Mai Tare Guman Nanak Nefal Jat Te Jom Kunchar Ishnan If a person does any daan upon, does anything changa, anything good and afterwards in their mind they say, well I did that, you know, daan upon mein kita, next level, that kind of stuff. He says that Man Mai Tare Guman Nanak Nefal Jat Te Jom Kunchar Ishnan You know, uh, uh, if you want... Uh, Elephant, when he has a, it goes in the water, puts pani on itself, comes out, just chucks mitti on itself again at the same time. So he did it ishnan, but he got dirty again. So if you did a good deed and then said I did it, then you made yourself dirty again. I think that's a simple, simple explanation for that. Is that all right? Yes. <laughs> what does Sikhi say about removing the panchka guards during childbirth, removing a kashera, or having hair removed due to childbirth? Very straightforward. When, a, when a, uh, a BP has a child, there could be, it could happen in numerous ways. It could happen naturally, it could happen through caesarean, it could happen, have complications. Nasul Gurmant Pana. Once you've had the child, the, the Singh and the BP, the parents and the child at the next Amritsar, you go Pesh as a family and the Panch Pyare give um, Jula to the baby boy or the baby girl and that way they give him Nam. And if there's anything to be bearish about, the Banjbiari give you Amrit again there. There's nothing complicated about that. Why could you Khalsa? Why could you Fadi? Why could you Khalsa? Why could you keep Fadi? Are people like Krishna, Shiva, Vishnu real? Gurbani talks about these people. And Gurbani is Sat, mean truth. But Gurbani also talks about Adam and the Krishna. Christian story of creation is not according to Gurmat. So how can only one be real if Gurbani is not? Okay, he's basically asking about these characters. Then that we shouldn't get stuck into the references in Gurbani. Actually, there is mythology in the mythos, because it, there is mythology. It's not to be proven or disproven. Our, as being Sikh, we in Gurbani, is not our point to prove or, disappro or disprove whether Krishna existed or not or whether Adam existed or not because that's not what Guru says this, the Gurbani, what talk, the Gurbani is telling you that look at their characters and using their characters to explain something for example they, 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 saying these people they have good points but bad points they did so much bhakti, they did so much penance, they did sp prayed so much to God. But look, one of which you are going to have a Dekho, even they yearn for naam. Even only Mukti Mili and yet people are praying to them as gods. God made them, but they are praying to them. And there is a, a Shabbat from Guru Amar Das I don't know the, full, the, the exact line, but it's something like the Avtar, Jog Jog Ke Avtar, something on that line. I don't want to quote the full line because I, I don't know the full words. But basically, the avatar, see, the people who call that these are incarnations of God. In essence, who what are they? Guru Amar Das Ji says that they were kings of their times. They were kings of their times. People made them equal to God, similar to the pharaohs. The pharaohs were kings, but people elevated them to God. So that's as simple as that. So really, our my personal interpretation, they were kings of their times, which are elevated to God's status. But we are not really bothered whether they exist or not. If you look at Gurbani, Gurbani is trying to use the examples of their characters and what they did in their life to say whether what do we learn from that? So, similar, if somebody says something about Harry Potter to me and says, oh, you know about his character and something good or bad, I'm not too bothered oh, to prove Harry Potter exists or not. I'm more interested in what the person tried, the moral or what person is trying to tell me. So it's just Rajni Prana. But Adam, there's one Shabd, only the reference to Baba Adam da Shabd there. Only Ikwari Aya Gurbani Devi Chajikar. Only once it's been mentioned. And even as Pagat Kabir Ji da Shabd there, it's Pagat Kabir Ji. And it's said in the context of a Maulvi from this according to Professor Sahib Singh uh, Guru Granth Darpan. A Maulvi, a Muslim priest, approaches Pagat Kabir Ji and says, become a Muslim. Because I only found out this child because a Jehovah Witness came to my house and tried to say you become Jehovah Witness. And at that point, then I said, come inside, come inside, but he said, I don't want to come because that's fine. And that's another story. And um, 
But that, my father, my Guru Granth Sahib has got the answers for everything. So I went and looked on the internet. <coughs> And it's also mentioned that I'm like, wow, it's truly your Guru has answers to everything in life. That even Pait Kabirji used to be approached by these type of fanatics. And in this Shabbat, it says, Baba Kabirji says that, O oh Mullah, O oh Malvi, O oh, oh Muslim priest, you believe, Baba Adam, you believe. So, stick it to the max. It just say, uh, Adam, um, which, is which is the, um, the father of mankind, but it should be, you believed, it's probably in brackets, you believe that Adam is the father of mankind. And you said I should become Muslim so that I could go to heaven? Yeah? But then Bhagat Kabiji, if you read that shop, they go sick to myself and read it. Then then Bhagat Kabiji says, But if Adam's the most perfect person, Rabbin, according to your religion, Rabbin Unwi Latamarke Swarga to Kata Dita, the O Sapto Sampuran Monokse. He is a perfect human being. The Rabbin Unwi Kata Dita. So Mirevarga Namala Banda, where will I go? I'm nobody. If God chucks out the most hu perfect human being from heaven, why, where should I go? You're telling me become Muslim so I can go to heaven. If God can't keep Adam in heaven, where should I go? So it's a full shot, but it's quite good if you read that. And it just makes you a bit of awareness of how the true heaven is a Sangat. So that's the shot. Jokum of Waiji Khalsa, Waiji Ki Fateh. Waiji Khalsa, Waiji Ki Fateh. Where does the saying Guru Manu Garant come from? And that's a, uh, uh, a very common question, especially posed by those that believe in uh, human gurus. Uh, my Namtari brothers, they are artistic in sort of framing these sort of questions and honestly posing and sort of conning the Sangat into believing that their philosophy is right. Now, over the years, all the scholars have shown without any shadow of a doubt, all historians have stated that Guru Gobind Singh Ji went to Satchikant in 1708 and gave guruship to Guru Granth Sahib. But these uh, brothers of mine, for reasons only they know, started calling Baba Ram Singh the next guru. Baba Ram Singh appeared in the uh, 1800 something in 1850s so it was 100 and nearly 150 years after Guru Sahib Ji then he put some other Baba in between as well but it just makes so much nonsense that you know they get away with it because obviously they've got people following them that they, they con them into believing it but historically there's no fact uh, even philosophically there's nothing no basis and unfo oh, unfortunately now they've got a bit of quarrel going in because the, the Baba the present and his brother are not seeing eye to eye so there's some definitely something going on there it might not last that long or they might have another two Babas coming up my point is Guru Gobind Singh Ji clearly stated that after Guruji there will be no human Guru and this particular verse we read Agya pei akal ki tabi chalayo pant sav sikhan ko hukum hai guru maniyo grant. I was understood to be a line from pant prakash by Gyani Gyan Singh. And Gyani Gyan Singh is quoting what Guruji said when Guruji went to Satchik, before went to Satchikhand. But Gyani Guru Kaval Singh, who is a Kirtaniyana Pracharik, he said on Alpha TV clearly, he said that the Sevadar of Guru Gobind Singh Ji or the diary keeper of Guruji, he kept a diary of all the events that were happening. It's in that diary he mentions that, that Guruji says, Agya Pai Akal ki Tabi Chinayo Pantha Sab Sikhan Ko Hukum Hai Guru Maniyo Granth. And he says that diary still exists at Hajur Sahib. Authenticated uh, writings from Guruji's time, not just 100 years after, 50 years after. Uh, and really, In the Rayatanam is also uh, by Nandalalji Rayatanam uh, a similar thing appears, by Parlaad Singh Rayatanam a similar thing appears. And they are also old writings of Guruji's time. S the majority of the Sikhs have no doubt whatsoever. And remember, Guruji only put a stamp of seal on it. Bani was always Guru, the Shaud was always Guru, even Guru Nandi's time. Bani Guru, Guru hai Bani, which Bani Amrasare. Gaur Bani kahe Sevk Jan Manne Pratak Guru Nistare Satgur Bachan 
ਬਚਨ ਹੈ ਸਤਗੁਰ ਪਾਦਰ ਮੁਕਤ ਜਨਾਵੇ ਗੋ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਰੋਜ਼ ਇਨ ਗੁਰੂ ਦ ਦ ਬੋਡੀ ਵਾਸ ਓਨਲੀ ਅ ਕੰਟੇਨਰ ਵੈਨ ਦ ਮਿਸ਼ਨ ਵਾਸ ਕੰਪਲੀਟਡ ਬਾਈ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ there was no need for that body as a single entity what guru ji did was the jyot jin guru granth sahib the body function of bringing new uh, individual into sikhi want to come into sikhi was given to the panch pyare as pai sahib said in his talk this morning so in the day roop in the body roop we have the panch pyare and in the jyot roop everlasting guru is guru granth sahib hari khalsa wai ji fateh Okay there's two questions here which are very very similar. Um first one is if a Sikh male is to treat all Sikh women as sisters then how is that mentally supposed to change when marriage is suggested? Basically what is the gurmat way of seeing if a couple is a match? Do Sikhs ha- have to have arranged marriages? This comes up quite often in many camps especially when people are of this age which is teenagers going into graduates and adults. Um basically i believe from personal experience and looking at other gurusikhs that have been through this that your sanjog which means your your partner is predestined for you and chosen for you and i think if you try and find that person you will just create a mess around you if you come to like some people i remember once a person even said to me that oh you do you should just go to a ranch or just go to a camp and find yourself a wife you're of that age now to get married and i always thought that you know when i go to a camp or go to a ranch i don't really go to go and look for uh, a match or anything and that's completely wrong and but that's why some people think and it's unfortunate because this is how you get problems between girls and boys and i've seen that people who start on this path try to search for their old soulmate always create a mess for them selves personally that i believe that a gursik should solely concentrate on merging with his guru and i believe if you concentrate on merging with your guru all your garages not just marriage work everything fall in place naturally by the guru and that match will never fail yeah i've seen a lot of good young gursiks now who get married and afterwards have certain problems in marriage as well I believe that the guru always finds your perfect soulmate and that soulmate is not just in this life it could be from previous lives as well and that will happen I'll give you two stories just to this I was one gursik friend of mine who lived in Canada he came and stayed with us for a while and a person my paison singh hardeep singh's dad he said to this munda that you uh, were tilli resta aya put at the consider it and we'll speak to your parents and it was a very very good resta for this munda and he was a good sikh bb she was very well educated very much into gurmat but the munda said no i'm just into bhakti and i'm married to my guru i'm not going to do no, i'm not going to get married in this lifetime i'm just going to be a bhagat and i'm just going to do my bhakti and the good sikh pai rama singh pai son singh some of these other things said to us na na you got a to it dani te ke tum gristi jeevan te liye poorn ya and that's going to help you in your bhakti and munda mandani see they said to me talk to him and i said to him i can't speak to him i'm not even married myself i can tell him to get married but then pai son singh then said he go is at pai son singh's house there's an account part and pai son singh said to him at the account part at the end what is the hukum nama that's what you will do it's simple your guru whatever my questions in your mind whether you should get married or not then it will be answered in the hukum nama so we sitting there listen to the whole account part singh's doing simran and then in the morning when we did bhog after das the hukum nama started and we were sitting there listening to the hukum nama and the hukum nama was a lava a lava on the shaft and i i looked up and i started smiling and some of the other things that i went that thing he just said when just went down hana ye hon ta faske how can i argue with my guru and now he's happily married he's got young children he's very very happy in his life he lives in vancouver now he's marriage kripa on them ke thode san joge te likhe honde my singh ni she's from punjab if i if i spent my years trying to look for a singhani here i would never have found her she would never have found me she's on a different side of the world who knows where your sanjog is going to come from so you i would say to all of you do not flirt do not mess around do not waste these years i said in the divan the other day that usually bazurgs you know bazurgs when they speak to us they say that you got a lot of kirpa on you because most people in their lives i mean you find out what you're finding out now 
in their jota at the fourth stage of their life. During the first stage is childhood. During the second stage is your teenage years where people do maj masti. During the third stage, you work hard. And during the fourth stage, you retire and you got old age. Most people only find God or learn about God in that stage. But at that time, they have no time to do bhakti. They're old and they're soon going to pass away. So a person who finds out this gyan at this age means that you've got the opportunity to spend 20, 30, 40, maybe 50, 60 years of doing bhakti and seva for the pant and the kaam and help yourself. So use it with that. Focus on your guru, all your garage. Maharaj says, Santan de garage, aap kaloya. That he will come himself and he will put all your garages in place and none of your garages will go wrong. They will never go wrong. Why could you khalsa? Why could you khalsa? If anyone needs to get married, the Guru Sikhs will sort it out for you. Anna, speak to the elders. The elders no pata hai. Anna, and then you will just pick someone and they, you will choose each other according to your criteria. Do not go looking for it yourself. Why could you khalsa? Why could you khalsa? Before Sikhi could people reach Saj Khan? Before the path was started? Okay, and who was the Guru of the people in the other Yugs, i.e. Satyug? And the Guru, I think, I don't know whether this person listened to Dr. Dipinder Singh's lecture. If not, then you should, if you listen to that lecture, then it clears everything up. The Guru is not the Guru Nanak in a physical form, which you think that's a Guru, and the Guru is from 1469. The Guru has always been here, from beginning to end. Guru Makanadhan, Guru Makavedhan, Guru Makareha, Smai. The Guru is everywhere, even the atmosphere, like Dr. D was saying. The, even the, the Guru is everywhere. And, but when the Guru was manifested in 1469, in human form, the Guru was manifested, and then the Jyot was pointed within that, so that people could have easy access. So in the other Yogas, people did do, um, there's a Shabbat as well, which talks about the four Yogas. I don't know the, the Shabbat of Baha, so I apologize. But the Shabbat talks about all the Yogas, from Sat Yoga, then talks about Dvapara and Tretta and Kala Yoga. He goes through all of them and, and talks about that Kala Yoga is the most blessed Yoga. Yoga by the way means like a time period, shall I say, era. So out of all the time periods, the Kala Yoga is actually the most blessed one. This is the best time period. Reason being, because in where you have to do hundreds of years of Bhagati, devotion to God, people would leave their home and do Bhagati and people would have to really, really work hard to get to, to have experience God. That in Kala Yoga, we are given an easy path through Guru Nanak Pasha Ji to experience God, to get Jeevan Mukt. And that's why Guru Ma, we are very blessed. And in Kala Yoga, Guru Nanak Pasha has given this gift to all of us. So we, compared to the other Yogas, yeah, they had good things, but we actually, Kala Yoga is actually more blessed because through Guru Nanak Pasha, we can experience God, we can get Jeevan Mukt straight. So hopefully that explains it. So the Shabda Guru, the Guru has always been the Shabda Guru for the whole Jogs. And Guru Nanak in essence is the Shabda Guru. So Guru Nanak has been the Guru, the Shabda Guru has been the Guru, even though there is Pagat. In the Pagat you did Tapasya, only the Guru Shabda Guru you see. But they have to really work hard. But we don't have to do that. But even if any Bhava Jodh we see Sikhi Shabda Diya, then we are we just getting a, a precious jewel and, and putting it into dirt. So Binti, let's all look in within ourselves. Goose has given us a treasure and let's cherish that. Pulcha Kama Hawaii Guruji Ka Khalsa Hawaii Guruji Ki Fateh Should a Sikh allow his kish to be cut if it saves life, that is to donate bone marrow, kidney, etc. or even save his own life when an operation is needed to live? As far as the, the donation is concerned, uh, kidney or bone marrow, there's no clear guidelines on the on uh, organ uh, donations. It's going to be personal decision. If you feel it could be a member of your family you need to do it for, it's going to be your personal decision. Uh, but you will have to do peshi afterwards if you decide to do that. It's in the same way, if you have to have personal operation on your body uh, because of a malfunction or whatever then again it's your personal decision whether you go along with that operation or not. In general most people do uh, and if their hair is removed they do uh, a peshi afterwards and there's no severe punishment for that. That is accepted as uh, something that happens now 
What I did read or uh, watch on the TV is that some surgeons are now coming around to this fact that maybe there's no need to remove hair off the body because actually, I don't know whether you saw uh, the BBC documentary Fighting for Life. Did anybody see that? Lasted about four or five weeks. Nobody? I must be a boring person then. <laughs> I probably am. But it was brilliant. It showed you how the body inside reacts to diseases that you come on the outside. If somebody stabs you, how a body reacts to that stabbing, and it cures the wounds, and how the hairs provide uh, curing effects on the body and powerful effects on the body. And, this, the, and that program was saying, and they were top surgeons, not just any old uh, doctors, they were saying that it seems now that we're probably actually doing more harm by cutting the hair that if we left it on, the wounds probably heal a lot faster than they do now. So, but if you're caught with this particular surgeon who actually doesn't believe in that, and he still wants to uh, remove your hair, then it's not a budget carrot in that sense because you're not doing it deliberately. But you still have to do, do pesci afterwards for the panjipiare uh, and then carry on with your life. So it is a personal decision. We cannot say a strict rule, you must go through it. You must decide. But if you do decide, then you can always do a pesci and, and there's no serious crime in that. As, that. as if you said, you decide to cut your own hair, then there's a serious crime. Then the pesci is severe. Why do you call Sa? Why do you fate? Why do you call Sa? Why do you keep fate? Please explain fuller details about Tar Maharaj. Why are we judged if God doesn't have any human characteristics? So I think what they're uh, in essence saying it is God judges. God doesn't judge us, but we get the actions, we get the fruits of our actions. Similar, government makes a, a system that you have traffic lights. Every road, there's traffic lights, there's a, a, to, when you dri pass your driving test, you have to do the theory first, then the practical. You can't just suddenly start driving. And you need to know that when there's a green light, that's to go. Amber means that's 50-50 slow down and red is stop. I'm driving and then I go full speed ahead, it's a red light. I go I go the accident, the oh my gosh. I blame the government. The government's made the lights, but they go, my accident ho gaya. But may I try to do these claims directly, but they do know, you know, these advertisements on Alpha Punjabi, which Chal Punjab, Jeta da Koi, Satala Gia, the Jeru San Fonka, the claim Kuru, not the main phone car can make a government to the Pesananga. Oh, my God, I'm working on that. I should have known, I'm a fool, but I should have known there was a red light that then stop called Lapai. If it's a green light, then go. Okay. Similar, God's made everything in a system. Hereditary system, Jay, is not the government hates you that you had your accident. It's system, what he got there. System to know and you stay in harmony. Go out of the system and you go out of the harmony. As you sow, you shall reap. God is not a harsh judge. God does not give you extra punishment. It's not even punishment. God delivers justice. Punishment perhaps is a, is a misleading word. God delivers justice. If you do something good, you get good, bad, bad. So God does not give us anything extra punishment for anything. God gives how much we deserve, we get. So it's up to us. So the same in Taram Laj, that good and bad is the judge there. Pocho Kama, Vai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vai Guru Ji Ki Fateh. The, in the West, when you're growing up, you're always taught to believe in yourself. So when, for example, you're going to go for an interview, you know, you're taught to believe in yourself. So how do you then switch that into believing that maybe the Vai Guru will help you instead? So I, I'm a bit confused about that one. That's all. Thank you. A very good point actually is something I was thinking about sat there similarly in terms of careers in, in people uh, career driven they expect you to have ego really in many ways right they think it's ego that makes you successful in your career essentially so I'll uh, I've got a really good friend called Jaginder Singh hey. <laughs> <laughs> right Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh Actually, he's opened my eyes today uh, <laughs> with this uh, high and by and uh, greeting. Uh, even I didn't realize that uh, it was that important. Now, Banji's question, very valid, uh, very real. A school will let to believe, believe in yourself. You'll do well. Don't put yourself down. And we do. 
when we see somebody better than us, we say, I can't be like her or him. He's just better. And the, and the parents will say, of course you can. Work hard. And I do it all the time with my children, so I'm just as guilty. And I think the, really the root of that question is that Banji is trying to understand the two aspects. I don't think by the same thing really was saying that you've got to stop one aspect. There's an inner aspect and an outer aspect. To live in this world, you have to be successful. You have to build a life that you can live comfortably with your family, your community. And Guruji says that uh, it means you have to make the effort. And when you make the effort, it's you making the effort. And so there's automatically this inner ego working. And when people say, well, for God's sake, why did God put ego in us if it's that bad? And Pais has been saying that, you know, ego is bad. Ego is bad. But when you go deep down, you'll see that nothing is bad. Actually, ego is there for a purpose. Without ego, families wouldn't exist. Communities wouldn't exist. You trying to work in the family, in the community, doing seva, will you do it without saying, it's my duty, my duty, look after my family. It's my duty to serve the community. It's my duty to serve the nation. So this duty is accepted as part of your life. Now, you've used this concept of, I've got to be successful in life. Guruji says that. We've got to be successful. We've got to do well at whatever we do. We're not going to be doctors, we're not going to be lawyers, but whatever we do in life, we do it to our maximum effort. But the problem then occurs is, because I've been doing all this, this me has been increasing all the time, this ego, inner ego has been really pumping me up, because I've got my degree, I have my A-levels, four A's, a lot of pump from the family, a lot of pump from friends, some jealousy from those that didn't get A's, then I went to a university, I got uh, a first, and those I got a one, two, or a three, two, or whatever, they were jealous, and I was then pumped again with an advert in the paper saying, well done daughter, or well done son, you got a first, and then I went to a, for a job, and I got offered 30, 40,000 instead of the old 15,000, so I got more pumped up. So far, there's nothing wrong with being successful. If you are aware that that's not the battle, that's not really the real picture. That's only part of the journey that you exist here. Do all that. Would you say not do it? Do all that. But be aware, everything you do carries with it a tag of ego. And the bad news here is not, it doesn't stop with these university things. I've now decided that Oh, these are worldly things. I'm going to be religious. I'm going to learn Kirtan. So I spend hours and hours and days and days pleading with the Niji, please teach me Kirtan, saving him day and night to learn all the rags and learn brilliant tabla. And then I play on the stage and the Sangha say, wow, wow. <laughs> what a beautiful voice. What a beautiful tune he's got, rag. What, look at the tabla playing. And my ego suddenly goes up to the Himalayas. <laughs> There's nobody like me playing tabla. There's nobody like me doing kirtan. The very thing that was going to destroy ego has now suddenly boosted up to the highest level. But Guruji says, do kirtan. Learn tabla. Oh, I missed the one out. Ah, oh, no, I don't, know, I don't want to kirtan. I don't want to learn tabla. It's a bit hard. I should do part. So I go to a textile and say, please teach me a part. And spend years there learning part. And I'm a brilliant kathakar now. I can. And then Sangha say, wow, look at him, how he explained that. Shavad. And my ego suddenly shot up there saying, 
There's nobody like me doing katha. Match me if you can. Oh, by the way, somebody said I'm on the YouTube and they're trying to increase my ego about that. Anything you do in life will increase your ego. And that's why Paisal said this battle is not easy. And Guruji puts it beautifully. Raak pita prab mere mohe nirgun sab gun tere. I've got all these virtues that you've given me. I've been successful in life. I look after my family. I've done what you said. But I realize now, all I've done is I increase my ego higher and higher. Now how do I cope with it? And Guruji says, dear daughter, dear son, you can't. Now you've got to spend some time understanding what you've done. Had you understood it before, you would have controlled it as you went along. Like the Tabalchi saying, no Sangat, it's not, it's Guruji's Kirpa. No Sangat, the Kirtan says, no, 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 I'm full of faults, I'm full of sins. The Shabd is Guru's, nothing's mine. The Kathara's car says, no, no, it's Guruji's Kirpa that I was able to translate the Shabd. I am nothing. Same in the family when you say, yes, mother, I will do well, but with Guruji's grace. If Guruji's grace is with us on every action we perform, then we have this massive power of Guruji, which can destroy the inner building ego that carries on day and night, day and night. And Guruji says, one of the most powerful way of doing that is to pray. Through Gurbani. Raak pita prav mere gaudi mahalla panima. Raak pita prav mere mohe nirgun sab gun tere. Oh my godly father, heavenly father, please, please, Save me. Raak pita rab mere. Why? Mohe nirgun sab gun tere. But why should I say I am nirgun? Why should I say I've got no qualities? I've got a degree. I've got a highly paid job. And I can do kirtan. And I can do katha. Why should I say that? For the simple fact that all you've done is increase your ego higher and higher by not realizing they weren't yours. If he didn't give you the brain to study, how could you study? If he didn't give you the hands to play, how could you play the bhajja? How could you have achieved all this without his gifts? As Paisa have said, even the body is God's gift. Even the beauty is his gift. I mean, my daughter spend, all of you spend hours and hours on trying to look, make yourself look beautiful. But don't you realize God's made you beautiful anyway? The world is going to only show you another make leap world. What God's given you is much, much more beautiful and wonderful than anything the world can give you. So, the gist of it is, Raak pita prab mere mohe nirgun sab gun tere. I am full of weaknesses. I am full of sins. All qualities are yours. All faults are mine. Now, suddenly now, with your prayer, you suddenly put all your qualities in God's lap, saying, I'm full of weakness. Why? Because you realize that all your qualities really haven't helped you in removing this massive ego you built up. And then when you said, the cause of this was Panchabakhadi, Egriba, Rakhora, these five evils are tearing me apart, are hitting me left, right, and center. And I can't protect myself from them. Panch I'm a weak, I'm a weak person. Egriba, Rakura Oh God, please save me. Please save me. And the Shabd continues. I don't want to take all the time because of the other people got a question to ask. But the gist of it is what BBG asked was that no, you've got to do your best. I will not sympathize with those individuals who leave their studies and pretend they're going to do Pagati. I will not accept that sort of pakhand as bhakti because all they're doing is leaving their duties of the world and trying to pretend they're going to be saints. In my 37 years of experience in Sikhi, I've met very few who can succeed outside the family circle. Very few. Majority fail. Guruji's path is a path of a worldly married life path where you deal with the problems of family, you deal with life's problems, you deal with your community problems, and you deal with your country problems. 
you deal with all your problems and you strengthen your character by going through all these problems, not, not forsake, not leaving the world and saying, I'm going to go in the jungle, I'm going to lock myself in my room, mother can feed me, but I'm not going to pay a, earn a penny or pay my way. That is not the Guru's way. Uddham Karindiyan Jeevatu, Kamaavadiyan Sukh Punch, Tiyayanat Tu Prabhu Mil, Nana Kutri Chint. Tiyonaya, Kamaonaya, Ti Uddham Karnaya. Three things we have to do. Vahe Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vahe Guru Ji Ki Fateh. Vahe Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vahe Guru Ji Ki Fateh. I just want to add a slight little bit onto that, but, oh, maybe put it in a, in a sharp uh, term, if you like. When Guruji had a, had a battle of my the Dushtada Namin Uchita Pulga, is it Pendekana? Where it's three. Yeah, where, he said, I want a battle with Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Guru Har Gobind Sahib. Sorry, it wasn't Pendekana. It was Guru, with Guru Gobind Singh Ji. When the three arrows, isn't it? Yes. Sayyid Khan. Khan. Now he wanted a battle with Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Now, Cut a long story short. Guruji says, okay, you want the battle, you, th- you, you do the first var. First arrow is yours. He let him do the arrow and he missed. Now Guruji says, do a second one. You know, you missed. You know, you, you probably slipped or something, right? Let him do a second one. And he clipped Guruji's belt. He goes, Chalo, you know, you might have been a slight problem there in your concentration. Do again, you know? So let him do a third one and he clipped Guruji's ear. That's when Guruji got... Uh, Jabe ban la gyo, tabe ros ja gyo, Guruji says ros a gya. Guruji did one shot and destroyed him. Now Guruji says, Pai jeet meri kirpa kaal keri, right? The, j- the victory is mine. Guruji blessed me with the victory, but the kirpa was God's. Now if we take the interview situation in the same way, we say, you could say that, uh, you know, I've done these things, I've done these things. In your mind, if you keep the kirpas of God, then you haven't lost anything. You don't have to just say the word. People are afraid, say, if I say I, I know a lot of people just don't use I in their vocabulary and think that, well, now I've not, not got home. It's not to do with that. You could still say, well, I drove here today. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but if I remembered in my mind that the kirpa was God, he could have crashed me on the way anywhere, right? I could have done, done anything. We might not have got here. But the sa- that, that's the same way. You could go to an interview and say, "Well, I've done these things. I know these, and I, I'm, you know, I, you know, I've tried my best, and I'm, I'm you know, I've been recognised for doing these things." There's nothing wrong with that. But in your mind, just keep kirpa as God. And that, all, all my lecture was about was to say, "Give God His rightful place back in your life," which we've taken Him out from. I think. I hope that clarifies it. Why would you call Why? Right, Vijay says, does Sikhi believe in a physical heaven and hell? I have to say it. Vaheguru Ji ka khalsa, Vaheguru Ji ki fateh. It's a common question asked by many people, because other religions also touch on that subject of heaven and hell. Now, in Gurbani, it states clearly, Nanga dojk chaleya, ta disse khara dravana, kar augan, Pashyotavana. Dojk means hell. As far as heaven is concerned, the Panj Khands that are uh, described in Jabji Sahib, according to Paisai Parantir Singh Ji, they are actually realms, not just uh, spiritual stages. And uh, the soul's journey goes through Taramakhand, where it's judged, and then you either go into hell or you can progress, pro, uh, progress further onto other kinds. So we shouldn't go away with the notion, oh, there is no hell. Janakaraja Kornupai Gardashi, when he went from this world, he passed by hell and he got all them out of hell through his Nam Kamai. So it's not Guru, you not put some. Uh, just uh, an imaginary theory forward saying just to put fear in us. We have to answer for our actions. And if they're really bad actions, then we have to suffer the consequences. We don't believe in heaven or hell as a fearful thing or as a desirable thing. 
ਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਰਿਮਾਈਂਡ ਅਸ ਦੈਟ ਕਬੀਰ ਸਵਰਗ ਨਰਕ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਕਬੀਰ ਸਵਰਗ ਨਰਕ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਕੇ ਪ੍ਰਸਾਦ ਚਰਨ ਕਮਲ ਕੀ ਮੌਜ ਮੇ ਰਹੋ ਅੰਤ ਔਰ ਆਦ ਪਰ ਕਬੀਰ ਜੀ ਸੇ ਦੈਟ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਨਾਟ ਨਾਊ ਡੀਲਿੰਗਸ ਵਿਦ ਹੈਵਨ ਓ ਹੈਲ ਵਾਈ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਆ ਮਾਈ ਮਾਈ ਇਜ਼ ਟੋਟਲੀ ਅਬਜ਼ੋਰਬਡ ਇਨ ਦੀ ਲੋਟਸ ਫੀਟ ਆਫ ਗੋਡ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਨਾਊ ਡੀਲਿੰਗ ਵਿਦ ਦਾ ਸੋ ਅ ਗੁਰ ਸਿੱਖ does not fear hell he does not want heaven he follows guru's instructions he follows what guruji told him and he lives his life as much as he possibly can according to guruji's instructions and then he leaves up to guruji where he puts him because he knows that once he's near guruji and even in this life he will get understanding very soon that is not going to hell if he is following guruji's instruction in fact his life here will come very very wonderful very joyful inside he might be really poor in life you know he might have not very good clothes or smart clothes but if his inner radiance is a light he is probably the most happiest and richest person on this earth so this is what guruji wants us to be inner radiance and we have no fear of hell or any desire of heaven